Hello and welcome to Eat, Drink and Be Healthy. I'm Nigel Barden. Yes, I am. Indeed he is. And I'm Sarah Cameron. And this is your essential guide to a healthy and happier lifestyle. From food to fitness, we look at everything you need to know to help keep you in the best possible shape. On today's show, we'll be weighing up the cost and quality of muesli with Charlotte Hindle and seeking out those hidden calories with our calorie counter, Anne-Marie Gardner. And we'll be meeting a woman whose addiction to carrots quite literally turned her orange. All that's coming up, but now Nigel's getting on with the cooking. Yes, we're making the most of our mushrooms, no bad thing about that, with oodles of noodles and the help of our guest chef, Oded Schwartz. Hi, how are you doing? Hello, very well. What are you going to tempt us with today, Oded? Mushrooms and a few kinds of mushrooms. We have two kinds of mushroom today, shiitake, and shiitake are very good for you because they have a reputation of lowering your blood cholesterol. And then, because they're a bit too expensive, we add just brown caps to bulk them up, OK? Mm. He's a... Lovely they have game, a lovely yeah, gamey yeah, smell, yes. And, you know, if you, you can get them either fresh or you can get them dry and reconstitute yeah. them in hot water. Now, there is one particular thing about, uh, about the shiitake is that the stem is very tough. Yeah. So that has to be removed. And can you keep those for stock, though? Yes. Those, they're very good for stock, both fresh and dried. They give a wonderful kind of gamey flavour to anything. Mm. And kind of slice them quite thickly. Those, the stem is, is nice and soft, so you can just trim them and then cut them also into slices. And these, uh, the shiitake, really, uh, you get them fresh, what, in the summer, spring and summer, as far as... You get as, them uh, all year round, I mean, most supermarkets. Right. No. Yeah. Yeah. We're going to cost you... Oi, hello. Hello, um, it's starting no, already. <laughs> but you're gonna, we're going to cost you a few more quid, basically. Uh, not yeah. a few more quid, a few more pence. I right. mean, they really, the, the difference is not so, so big, and you need to use less of them because the flavour is much stronger. Right. Now... Heat the oil, heating some oil in, in a frying pan and the, the kind of the thicker the frying pan the better and get it quite hot. Is that, a, is that olive oil? Olive oil, yeah, yes, just, but just you straight. can, yeah, but you can use any other oil because the, the dish is about kind of Southeast Asian, you can use either peanut oil with a bit of sesame oil to give it flavour or all kind of combination that you want. Mm -hmm. And some shallots uh -huh. and some garlic and if you garlic, here it is and ginger. And if you notice, I cut my shallots and garlic into very thick slices. I thought that. I thought yes. they were thick slices from Oded. Because you, <laughs> usually, you know, we chop them and they disappear in the yep. sauce. What for? You use shallots to show that you use shallots in the dish. So I kind of chop them quite coarsely yep. and put them into hot oil and fry them very quickly until they start changing colour which will take a bit on this. Yeah. So gas. it's already on quite a high heat, ideally. Quite, yeah. And initially. The, initially. And why it is that you, you give them, first of all, a bit of colour, and then you caramelise the sugars, right. which are in, the, in, in those vegetables, and you get a sweeter finish. Cheeky. It's mm. very cheeky. And add also a bit of colour. Yeah, lovely. OK? And then the prepared mushrooms. Yeah. In go the shiitakes. The shiitakes. And then go the brown caps. Yeah. And the brown caps are, lo are, are lovely and they also, you know, they have a more interesting colour because I find that the normal mushrooms kind of get very grey and miserable when yeah, you cook yeah, them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and they're pretty bland, some of the commercial yes, ones you get. I know shiitakes can be grown, but they just have got much more... Most of them Very are sensuous, that yes, smell, isn't yes. it? Yes. And basically, you can do the same dish from all kind of uh, mushroom combination. And in a lot of supermarkets, they now started selling all kind of weird and wonderful mushrooms. Just try them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I love the, the, yeah. the pong. <laughs> that's enough about me. Yeah. How long would you cook these for? Uh, about five minutes until the mushroom starts to uh, omit some of the liquid and kind of shrink a bit. Mm. And then you start with the liquids. Some of the soy. Oh. Fabby. And... Chicken stock. Okay. But you could have used. I mean, you can have used either wine or you can use even water. Yeah. I mean, the, the flavour will be different. Yeah, and you could use the stalks if you wanted from the shikati. Shikati to do the, the stock, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. But not not in it. If you want, you can. You'll have to fish them out yeah. because really they are tough. So now it should 
come to a boil, and I have, as usual... Ah, uh, clever. You see, because I thought we haven't got five it. minutes. What are we going to do? I panicked a little bit, but I looked at you, and you so, were very smooth and Very calm. smooth, yeah. So here it is. You know, the, the, yeah. the sauce has thickened. Great. It's kind of glossy. It smells wonderful. Oh, I'm means, downwind of that. It's gorgeous. You see? Yeah. Let's and get them served up. Finished first. OK, sorry. Pardon and me. to finish it, sorry. there is a surprise. And that's really what makes this the dish. I'm adding some fruit into it, in this case, blueberry. But blueberries? That, no, yes. blueberries and mushrooms. That's wicked. Yes, it yeah. is wicked. Oh, and just a fab idea. Them. And you don't need to cook the blueberries because they're very nice raw. So just heat them through. And because it's ready, okay. I'll just give it a second or two. Okay. Okay. And. Okay. Onto the plate as soon as we can. Onto and the plate uh, let's as have a bit of a ooh, bit of a taste up. Fabo. These look gorgeous. And everyone always says that in cooking programs, oh it looks gorgeous. But it does. Here you are. And yeah. you know. Go taste on. it, taste it, okay. but I'll finish it kind of just a bit of one more leaf. Mmm, not quite hot. Mm. Mm, very hot. <laughs> but lovely. And you do it get that really delicious, rather. Naughty aroma, which I love so much. I, and yeah. I'm sure it's these rather than you or me, Oded, but thanks very much. <laughs> Thank you, Oded, a lot. And uh, now let's catch up with Sarah and Charlotte Hindle while I finish off these, uh, who have been out and about in search of superior shopping. Don't you forget to wash up, Nigel. He's terrible about things like that. Right, on each show, Eat, Drink and Be Healthy will be scouring the streets to track down some of the best buys to keep you and your family in blooming good health. Today, we're checking out the Swiss breakfast time favourite, muesli. Hi, Charlotte. First hi, of all, hi, Sarah. Right. Hi. Take us through what you've been testing. Well, we're trying um, five lots of muesli, the sort of muesli that you find in any supermarket. Yeah. Now, the first one I've brought along is uh, Tesco's. Now, I don't know whether you can see this, but um, it's a bit dull, isn't it? I mean, you know, it's... It, it doesn't really have lots of different fruits and, it's and things. Flowery, in. So let's, isn't it, really? It is a bit flowery. Lots of oats. Um, but it's quite crunchy. I don't know whether you... Are you a muesli fan? I do, actually. I'm partial to yeah. an odd bit of well, muesli, yeah. Have a bit of a taste. Have You've got your own spoon. spoon. We're, We're very hygienic yeah. on the We're show. We're terribly hygienic. We only share a bowl, but we don't <laughs> share a spoon. That's OK. Now, it is quite crunchy. What, what is mm. nice about it, if you like... If you don't like muesli because it gets a bit soft mm. and slushy, then Tesco's is good because it is crunchy. But it... There's not a lot of difference between bran flakes and, and this, really, is right, there? Right, now I mean, this one, bringing us swiftly onto Jordan's, has Jordan's now, a lot this more is, fruit. Jordan's is much more sort of specialised. It's got apricots in it, it's got whole nuts, you can see the big hazelnuts, raisins, sultanas, coconut even. Really? And um, uh, as well as the, all the different types of flakes. Right. Now this has got much more flavour to it. A little taste. It's actually much bigger to eat. Oh, it's getting bigger. More robust. Oh, it's got apricot, huge great apricot. But again, you know, it does have that flowery taste. Now, none of these have got added sugar or salt. Right. So they're the healthy muesli. And um, some people might find that, you know, not, not too flavoursome. Very coarse, isn't it? That one? Yeah, it's, it's a bit more good. expensive. At um, for 500 grams, it's one pound 43. Okay. And what but about Alpen? Not which as is expensive as Famous Alpen, Alpen that everyone because, knows. Because uh, that's one pound 55 for 500 grams. Now, pop a bit of milk on that. As you can see, it's much darker. Yeah. Isn't it? You see that? It's much darker. Uh, and it is quite crunchy, which is what I liked about it. Yeah. But um, let's have a let's have a dig in. Bit of a <laughs> bit of a two. Again, you've got that flowery taste about it, but that's it has crunchy. a bite. Is that, that bran that's, flakes? Well, it's, it's, they have the wheat flakes and oat flakes in it, but um, it has much more of a crunch to it, which I prefer in a breakfast cereal, really. It's not as attractive as Jordan, so is it, really? Well, depends what you like. I mean, the darker, some people prefer the darker one. It is dark. Personally, I do like the Jordans for the, for the lumps. Yeah, the, colour, the nuts and the raisins, yeah. Uh, now, how many calories is that? That's uh, 179 for a, a serving. And that's with milk. Is that skimmed milk or is that sort of just... Yeah, a semi-skimmed milk. milk. Okay. Half and half. We don't go the full mm -hmm. skimmed. My way. goodness. Now this, this is Sainsbury's, and I have to say, I think Sainsbury's muesli is a bit of a star because look at these huge Brazil nuts and whole hazelnuts. It's got uh, bits of um, banana in and coconut. It's similar to the Jordans, and it's got lots of different things in it. In fact, you have trouble finding the rolled oats in this mm. one. It's got so much the other bit, things. The, in it. Um, the rabbit food is, mm. is quite well hidden. Yeah. And I think no it's full of flavour. It's really delicious. 
no added salt, no added sugar, and at um, you get a huge big bag like that for two pounds fifty nine, and um, which works out at uh, just eighty six so p for five hundred grams. So it's much, by far the cheapest. Asda. Now, now Asda. this looks like a bowl of rice krispies. Bit sad. Bit sad, Asda. I'm Very afraid. sad. It, uh, it isn't even the cheapest either. Sainsbury's is the cheapest. And this is 228 calories per serving. So it's hugely more um, calorific. Do they actually advertise that it's got bit... nuts and raisins in it and things? Because it... Oh, yeah. It has, it has nuts and raisins. But it's a bit dull, isn't it? It doesn't it's have extremely the... extremely dull. It has a bit of a crunch. So like which the... one do you oh, prefer? Okay. Well, it has to be the Sainsbury's. I think it's smashing. I think it's really good value. I can't believe... I mean, all the others are around the one pound forty fifty mark mm. for five hundred grams. But Sainsbury's would work out at eighty six p, which is great. That is good value, and it actually looks the most attractive. Yeah, and it has your whole nuts. Of course, make sure you watch out if you are allergic no. to nuts. Get the ones without nuts in. Thanks, Charlotte. Thank you. Right, time for a break now, as I pick the muesli out of my teeth. Mm -hmm. See you in a couple of minutes with some handy, healthy hints on keeping fit. Welcome back to Eat, Drink and Be Healthy, because we're working out how to gain without the pain. I've been promised this by Anne-Marie Gardner from the very posh Tatler magazine. Now, Anne-Marie, in day-to-day -day lifestyle, if I don't want to leg it to the gym, how can I just bring in a bit of exercise into my usual routine? Well, unfortunately, I'm not going to tell you that you can sit in a sofa and not do anything because... I'm off, thanks. You have to. <laughs> the right. point is, I think everybody in this country really hates to exercise. Of course we do, we're and British. Yeah. But, but the point is, you have to make it fun. That's the only way to do it. So um, th there are tricks that you can do that kind of make you do it. So get up and, and whatever it is, you have incentive. So And you have to... When you were small, you used to go out and play. It was fun. So the point is to do something that you like to do that's fun. So... For example, you could go biking, or you could go hiking, or you could jump rope. Remember, you said skip rope. A long and this time ago. This is very yeah. trendy exercise now, the skipping rope. Um, the, all the boxer size classes now in America are very yeah. big into skipping. Do you know how to skip? You show me first, then I'll have a go. <laughs> What's, is there any particular <laughs> technique very, I should It's be? actually not that easy if you haven't done it in a while, which you probably haven't done it since you're about ten. Oops. <laughs> so, but you have to just start out slow, and you could take the skip in the in the middle and just pretend, and you could sing a song or something. Yeah, well, but I'd... this weight, this rope is a little bit light. The weight, the rope should really be. Oh, stop complaining! Weighted. Give so it over here. I'll have a go. Here a we professional. Go. Okay. I wouldn't say it's been a long but... time since I did this, but, but the instructions used to be in Latin. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you skip rope for like three minutes, it's equivalent to. Oh, I got my figures wrong. About fifteen minutes of running. Okay, give me a bit of room here. So, okay. One, two, and skip. That's it. So that's very difficult. And okay, that's go. okay. Well, maybe there's something. Maybe you can do the trampoline. The trampoline, if you remember from, I don't know if you have gym class over here. Gym. We I, had gym class I in America. I grew up with gym. Great lad. And the trampoline was always really fun. And you can buy these home trampolines now that, I mean, guarantee, I, I, I dare you to get on that and not laugh while you're doing it. It's fun. <laughs> I mean, it is fun. And it burns a lot of <laughs> calories as well. And no, it does so it. It's finished. You're supposed to jump. Jump, right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, how high? The oh, only hazard is if you have a low ceiling, I guess. Yeah, I mean, can I go quite and do a bit? Okay, now you can really jump. I'm jumping, I'm jumping. <laughs> I mean, it's fun, isn't it? Yeah, I'm having a lot of fun, actually. Very good. I'm sweating quite a lot. Is that no, normal? No, yeah, you're exercising. You good. are burning calories doing and that. how long do you do good. this for? It's good. You can do it for as long. You can watch TV and do it. That's a good thing. Put it in front of the TV. And do you need do any for... small helpers around you just in case you fall off? No, I think it's pretty It's pretty safe. OK, you can have backwards flip, triple salco. But do you feel like you're getting exercise? Exercise. Yeah, yeah, I've got quite a lot of exercise there. That's not so hot, so painful, is it? Yeah, how's your uh, medical qualifications? Okay. <laughs> yeah. CPR, Good. just okay. in case. Okay, so the point is to do something fun. So there are loads of things you can do. You can go biking. But the second thing to do, um, which is also one of the things you're excellent at in this country, is keeping plans when you make dinner arrangements. Everybody's very good about keeping plans. So the make an appointment to have to have an exercise date with a friend and the best thing is to meet somebody in the morning and go for a walk even if you just like walking is meet somebody then you're you have to go you meet them for an exercise a yoga class or meet them for something you like to do together i mean walking is great because especially for women because you can meet in the morning you can walk and catch up on all the gossip it's excellent exercise. They're recommending it in, the, in America now over running. They're saying to walk instead of run that it's actually better for you physically. And um, one of well, the... I, I, I'm just saying that I'm hot for a walking date with you, Anne-Marie Gardner. <laughs> and uh, thanks very much, and I'm looking forward to it quite a lot. Thanks, 
Lancelot, Anne-Marie and Nigel. Now you might be crazy over chocolate, delirious about donuts and quite simply passionate about peaches. But what happens when your favourite food takes over your life, consuming your every working hour and affecting your relationships with your family and friends? Sue Bayliss ate so many carrots her addiction turned her orange, while Zoe Lindsay piled on the pounds due to her sweet tooth. Joining us to discuss the dangers of food addiction is Robin Lefevre, director of the Promise Recovery Centre in London. Welcome, thank you for joining me today. Maybe Zoe, if we could start with you, perhaps you could tell us about your addiction. Um, well, I suppose my addiction, as you said, was to chocolate and sweet foods. Um, started probably when I was about 16, 17 years old. Uh, well, that's when I noticed it. So I'd always eaten quite a lot of sweet foods and had a sweet tooth, as it were. Um, but when I was 17, 18, I started piling on the pounds. Um, I was at university. Um, I was under a lot of stress and I was struggling hard with my final exams and my sort of midterm papers. And I sort of turned to sweet food and chocolate to sort of keep me going. Unfortunately, it got a bit out of hand and I went from about 10 stone, 10 stone 2. Right. Uh, and when I left university, I was 14 stone 4. So, I mean, we all say it, don't we? Oh, I'm absolutely addicted to chocolate. I can't. But in what way and what quantities were you eating as opposed to your friends who were just relying on it as a crutch to get through some stressful times? Um, well, I could quite happily sit down these packet of biscuits to myself. Later on in the day, I'd probably have some chocolate cake or a bar of chocolate. Um, my final year at university, I lived a, above a row of shops, so it was quite easy to go downstairs and just buy myself whatever I wanted. Um, so I was eating really quite large amounts in comparison to a normal person, if you could call you know, somebody a normal person. Um, I'd eat chocolate in some form every single day. Right. Um, it got to the stage where I actually had to have chocolate. You know, I felt like I really had to have some chocolate and nothing else would do um, other, you know, other than that. And also other sweet foods, cakes, biscuits... So it really sort of got quite out of hand by the time I was finishing university. So what did you do? Well, um, I actually discovered um, a new patch that had been uh, discovered um, called Diet Scent. Um, I've actually got one on my wrist. So do you still rely on those now? No, I only use them for a couple of months. Right. What it is, it's actually a patch that gives off a smell, a very sickly smell. Um, it works on such a saturation effect. Um, it doesn't pump anything into the bloodstream, such as nicotine right. patches, so it's very healthy and safe. So it's just like the ones we see people use for cigarettes. And it's that's like that, but it doesn't actually put anything into the bloodstream. That's curbed your addiction. It, what it is, is, yeah, I used that, um, started using that the October after I'd left university. Um, and basically, when I got a craving, I just sniffed the patch. Right. Um, then it sort of, you know, curbed the, the, the need for the sweet food. Is that... Um, Robin, if I could come to you, sorry to interrupt you, Zoe. Okay. Is that a usual way to curb an addiction like this? Is that quite a useful tool? Well, there are a lot of ways of curbing the actual addictive behaviour. I mean, for heroin addicts, we would give them methadone detox them over a few days. For people with um, uh, alcoholism, we might give them uh, Librium over a period of time, too, to detoxify them. And I can see how this could be an effective help towards detoxifying people, if you like, from an eating disorder. So what other ways are there to help curb an addiction like Zoe's? Well, there are a number of ways of sort of helping people actually break the addictive pattern, but when people are actually in um, recovery from the addiction, for, for food particularly, um, the recovery process involves eating three regular meals a day with no snacking in between, no sugar and no white flour, because certain substances are psychoactive, such as sugar and white flour. Um, also, there are certain binge foods. Um, I see you've got a, a bowl of carrots um, on the table, and, right. and in fact, those could be used as a as a binge food. But these have actually caused a problem in themselves. Um, in terms of Sue, your story, perhaps you'd like to tell us about that. Um, yes, mine started in with a pregnancy, right? And I had acute nausea, and I tried all the usual methods, but someone suggested I tried celery, and then celery didn't really help at all. And then one day, I just picked up a carrot, and that did it for me. So. You were pregnant? I was pregnant. And it stopped you feeling nauseous? Yes, but the, I got through the whole pregnancy. Right, eating without, carrots? Just eating carrots, and just sort of pounds a day. But gradually, after the birth of the child, it escalated. How to long have you been addicted to carrots? 20 years. 20 years, and what, I mean, exactly how many carrots would you eat at the height of your addiction? Five pounds about, for about 18 months to two years. Five I pounds a, a day. Five pounds a day, a day of carrots? Yes. And then I sort of eased it back down. I'm on about two pounds, if I'm truthful now, a day. Robin, I mean, I would say, oh, surely carrots are healthy and, and good for you, but obviously they're not in the extreme. Mm -hmm. So what yeah, would you do with an addiction like that? Well, carrots are healthy. I mean, alcohol, as has been shown, um, is healthy in moderation. Um, the problem is with some of us, I, mean, my, I myself have a problem with alcohol and drugs. Um, and, you know, for me, I can't touch either at all. Um, similarly, for somebody with an eating problem, it's the... 
it, the problem is with us, not with the actual chemicals. We don't need to have any sort of health warnings on carrots. Um, we don't actually need the health warnings and the sort of stipulations that we do on alcohol. It's the problem is with the people, and therefore the treatment and the help has to come to the people. We focus too much, I think, on the sort of chemicals we're always focusing on. Well, the carrots or the addictive item itself. If I can come to you, Sue, what stage are you at now with your addiction? About two pounds a day. Two pounds in weight of carrots a day? Yes, that's, that's, that's about it now. I've cut right back now. And how did you go about doing this? I tried to wean, I practiced weaning myself off by not starting so early in the morning and making it later in the day, starting them, because I used to start at breakfast time and work steadily through the day. But did now I don't start till after lunch. And did you eat anything else in between all these well, carrots? normal meals. The, all the Perfect. carrots and meals? No, or just normal meals as well as, as the As well as yes. your carrots. Mm. Mm. Robin, what are we, are we looking at the wrong thing here? We're looking at the carrots, we're looking mm. at the, the chocolate. Those seem to be symptoms. That's right, very much so. All, all addictive behaviours um, serve the same purpose, which is to be able to anaesthetise our feelings, to get away from bad feelings. Now, while we're anaesthetised from our feelings, we're able to get into situations which become progressively more damaging to us because we don't feel the full consequences of them. And so there becomes this sort of horrible spiral of addictive behaviour. Um, for food, I mean, there are four, four primary addictive behaviours. One is starving, um, and you just become high, both on the, on the control around the starving and also just become, becoming tired. So these are the warning signals we should be looking for? These are the specific behaviours. I mean, for example, when we talk about carrot addiction, it isn't carrot addiction. It would be like saying, you know, we're addicted to Bell's whiskey. We're actually talking about alcoholism there. And here, similarly with carrot addiction, we're talking about one, of, one or a number of these addictive behaviours around food. So the first is starving of any kind. The second is binging of any kind. You know that sort of lethargic feeling right. you get after lunch. The third is being is purging, whether it be over-exercising or um, uh, any form of purging behaviour, whether it be laxatives or vomiting, whatever. Yeah. Um, and the fourth would be um, being addicted to specifically psychoactive chemicals such as sugar or white refined carbohydrates. You know how if you ate sort of three Mars bars suddenly yeah. on the trot, you'd get a bit of a buzz. Okay. It's that sort of buzz that people so are So we going should for. be looking for those in ourselves or in others to, to be aware that an addiction might be happening. We should look yeah. for addictive people, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. So that's it. There is no more. But do join us again for another hale and hearty session. Until then, eat, drink and most of all, be healthy. Mm -hmm.